Hey everyone, it's Michael. Welcome back to the channel. Today, it's finally here. We're talking about the last album from Sum 41. Here's just a quick recap of how we got here before we dive into the album. Last year, Sum 41 announced that they would be retiring, but before that, they would give us one brand new album, a double album titled Heaven and Hell, showcasing both sides of Sum 41. Heaven being the more pop punk side of Sum 41, and Hell being the more metal side. Of Sum 41. It's an interesting time for Sum 41 to be calling it quits. I mean, it feels like nostalgia is at such a high. I mean, Limp Biscuit is drawing massive crowds, Creed is back, and they're drawing massive crowds. And if we look into the pop punk landscape bands that came up with Sum 41, Bayside, Blink 182, Yellow Card, Green Day, all of those bands are still going strong. The best way I would describe this album is it's like a victory lap or a celebration. It's a big thank you to fans of Sum 41. Uh, if you go into this album expecting the band to do something new and revolutionary, you're going to be disappointed. The album has 20 songs, so it's split right down the middle. 10 pop punk songs and 10 metal songs that metalheads will say are just 10 more pop punk songs. The first thing I noticed about this album was Derek's voice. He sounds great the entire album. I know he's gone through some different health problems, but I believe everything is uh, okay now. So on the pop punk side, when it needs to be more like kind of clean vocals and super catchy, it sounds great there. And then on the metal side where you need some more grit or raw or some more intensity uh, and even some screaming, his voice sounds great there. It just, whether it's the pop punk side or the metal side, his voice is great, I think, on the entire album. While I really like Derek's voice on the album, I think the music sounds a little bit too clean and polished, especially when we get to some of the more punkier songs on the album. It's just... It's almost there. Some songs, the music, everything comes together and it sounds perfect, but I think this problem probably more affects the pop punk side, the heaven side of the album. It just sounds, too many songs sound too clean and too produced, if that makes any sense. So let's start with the heaven side of the album, the pop punk side of the album, and this is the first track if you go on streaming. So the first song is Waiting on a Twist of Fate, and you are immediately greeted with the pop punk Sum 41, the super catchy Sum 41. It's everything that Sum 41 does so well, and it's track one, it's song one, and it's a song that immediately gets stuck in your head. Next up is Landmines, and we've had this song for a while. It was one of the first songs released from the album, and I think it's the first song that was released from the pop-punk side of the album, if I am remembering correctly. I believe so, and it is. It's the most pop-punky song on the album. If you like uh, early 2000s pop-punk and you're nostalgic for that, this song hits that sweet spot perfectly. It's funny, I saw online someone was saying that Time Won't Wait and Dopamine from this album, from the pop punk side of this album, sounded like Machine Gun Kelly during his pop punk phase with Tickets to My Downfall and Mainstream Sellout, which is just a hilarious thought to think about. But then I thought about it. Can we criticize Sum 41 for sounding like Machine Gun Kelly when Machine Gun Kelly was trying to sound like early 2000s pop punk? I think Sum 41 wins in that debate. Regardless of the Machine Gun Kelly comparisons, which is something I didn't think I would be saying in a video about Sum 41's last album, uh, Dopamine is one of my favorite songs on the album. It's super catchy. It's going to get immediately stuck in your head. Radio Silence is the last song on the Heaven side of the album, so that means it's the last pop punk song we are ever getting from Sum 41, and I think it does its job pretty well. It has a big sweeping chorus. It sounds like a song that should be the last song on an album. The Hell side of the album opens up with a little interlude, and then we start with Rise Up, a song that we've had for a while, but just listening to the album all the way through, if you were worried that the pop-punk side might sound similar to the darker metal side of Sum 41, you don't have to worry about that, because right when the Hell side of the album starts, the sound changes, everything changes, and we definitely get that more darker, gritty metal Sum 41. The biggest standout for me on the hell side of the album is You Wanted War. I think it's the best song on the album. And if I had to show somebody one song that could encompass this entire album, this is the song I would pick. So if you only have time to listen to one song, I would check out You Wanted War. It's the most 
uh, gritty song on the album, the most intense song on the album, and it's one of the best songs on the album that isn't overly polished, like I talked about a little bit earlier. It's raw in all the places that it needs to be. It's gritty, it's punk, it's metal. It's that classic Chuck style of Sum 41. It's kind of wild we get a cover song on the last album from Sum 41, but it's Painted Black by the Rolling Stones, so feel free to check that out if that's your thing. The album ends with the song How the End Begins, and this is it. This is the last new song we are ever getting from Sum 41. The lyrics are, now it's the end, we can't get it back, why doesn't anything good ever last, I gave it all I could give, only to question if, this is how the end begins, and I should have known. And that's it, that's the last Sum 41 album. Now the big question obviously is, did Sum 41 go out on top? Is this the best Sum 41 album? No, I don't think anybody would say that. Uh, you know, odds are it's probably gonna be somebody's favorite album from Sum 41, and that's okay, but for me, it's not. And honestly, with the way that streaming is and, and playlists and attention spans and all of that, I honestly wonder how many people are going to listen to all 20 songs. I believe the total runtime is about 55 minutes. And yeah, I honestly don't know how many people are going to listen to the entire thing. And I hope that doesn't come across as negative. I liked this album, but I'm distant when it comes to being nostalgic for that early 2000s, you know, pop punk uh, era, you know, some Blink, Good Charlotte, Simple Plan, all of those bands, uh, because my, I'm nostalgic for the 2010s pop punk scene, Tigers, Jaw, Joyce Manor, uh, Pup, The Story So Far, The Menzingers, all those type of bands defend pop punk. Uh, so that's what I'm nostalgic for, you know, the early 2000s, I was, you know, way too young for any of those songs for to have any you know nostalgia like i you know i got a cd from sum 41 i got all killer no filler and put it in my uh cd player in my car like you know that didn't happen for me so honestly for me and i'm not saying this as a hot take or anything but i really liked screaming bloody murder by sum 41 so like i'm more nostalgic for that album than i am to all killer no filler in in all honesty i like both albums but i have more memories of you know screaming bloody murder coming out than obviously i do of you know some of sum 41's more early your work and honestly you know what did you want from sum 41 on this album did you want them to go experimental and spread their wings and try different and brand new things on their final album i don't think anybody wanted that and honestly it wouldn't have made any sense anyway if i was a diehard sum 41 fan i would be so happy that the band let us know that they were retiring or breaking up, whatever you want to call it. It wasn't like some shocking news. They're still touring. They gave us a last album with 20 songs, a double album, and it's the pop punk and metal, the two most beloved sounds of Sum 41, of their hardcore fan base. I don't know what else Sum 41 could do for their hardcore fan base with the last album. I think they pretty much nailed every bullet point that you would want. My final thoughts on the album are, if you go into this album knowing what you're going to get, knowing that you're going to get Sum 41 at their most Sum 41-ist, then you're going to have a good time. And I know what the band said, that this is goodbye, that the band is retiring, but we've seen those type of announcements in the pop punk scene before. Yellow Card, Motion City Soundtrack. I'm just saying, sometimes the end isn't always the end. Enjoy the album, don't overthink it, and sing along. Let me know what you thought of Sum 41's final album in the comments below. Please like the video, it really helps me out. Subscribe if you haven't. Tell all your friends, and thanks for watching.